clearly they have to fight Hamas. Uh, they also have to use other tools, because I've already mentioned to you, namely mobilizing the power of Hamas's international connections, the support of countries in the region like Egypt for a negotiated release of the uh, prisoners. I hope that it will actually come to that and that the threats which Israel is now posing to the Gaza civilian population will lead to an intensification of those efforts which have begun not only to ease the humanitarian situation by creating a corridor for supplies and ending the uh, total blockade of Gaza, which, again, I cannot see is consistent with any laws of war. So, yes, there is a lot to be done. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, uh, there is no interest in it, apparently, in Whitehall. Well, let's speak again to Sir Richard Dalton. Uh, Sir Richard, thank you for your patience. You were just uh, sort of explaining to us about the idea of moving, moving people through Gaza and what merit that has, and indeed the position of the UK government at this time. It's not clear to me that uh, Israeli war aims, which appear to be to occupy uh, the northern half of Gaza, and in doing so to pay uh, very, little very little attention as they have hitherto, to civilian casualties uh, is within the law. I find the British government's knee-jerk endorsement of everything that Israel does obscene and uh, a departure from uh, previous stances in which we have sought some fairness in these dreadful situations. Clearly, what Hamas has done was an obscene terrorist atrocity, but Israel should not be committing war crimes in response. That's, it's quite strong language you're using there, Sir Richard, that the, that the UK government's endorsement is obscene. Can you, can you understand why they are keen to, to express their support for Israel? Yes, they've done that. And uh, I support Israel's right to live in peace and security. I support the utmost condemnation of the killing of innocents, uh, as Hamas indeed did. But we should respect our own policy, which is that the response from Israel should be proportionate. We've used that language. We've also endorsed statements by uh, European and American government leaders calling for an equal measure of security and freedom for Palestinians and Israelis. And yet we are endorsing a policy which is simply not in line with those policy, with those statements. Mm. Israeli actions are not proportionate, and there is no strategy whatsoever for resolving the underlying issues which create four wars against Gaza, between Gaza and Israel uh, in the last 20 years, and which has been festering in the West Bank and Jerusalem uh, for many decades. When you say that Israel's response is not proportionate, what specifically would you point to as, as outlining and evidencing that? Well, it's clear from our screens, isn't it? It's clear that from the 1,500 civilian casualties, from the dead babies, uh, the mourning mothers, uh, I'm not seeking in any way to exonerate Hamas for responsibility for bringing consequences upon itself. Mm. But Israel's policy to drive population out of their homes in the top half of Gaza, presumably to reoccupy that whole area and to leave it in ruins, uh, when an option using local neighbors of Gaza, Arab countries and the international community generally, to secure the release of hostages and to secure a more stable situation in Gaza, which is not a threat to Israel, is open to them. They've chosen a 100% military option with all its appalling consequences. And I don't believe that it is right for the British government to give that 
100% endorsement. Mm. Uh, it's interesting to to hear from you this morning, Sir Richard, particularly when we consider the the role of Iran in this as well. You're a former ambassador to Iran. Um, uh, there's much discussion this week about the the backing uh, from Iran, uh, Iran, excuse me, of Hamas, uh, and perhaps their motivation in all of this. What would be your assessment of of that and of Iran's uh, backing of Hamas and the invasion uh, last weekend? There's no connection being established in the evidence between the invasion out of, into, into Israel a week ago and Iran. Uh, none whatsoever. And Israel and the United States have attested that. Clearly, Iran has supported Hamas with funding and military technology and training over a long period. But like Hezbollah, Hamas is not a proxy it's not a tool of any other country. It takes its own decisions based on what they perceive to be their interests. So what we have now is a ridiculous reaction by the United States proving yet again that in diplomacy in the Middle East, the United States' word cannot be trusted. They had a deal to release prisoners with Iran and to permit Iran to use its own money frozen in Korea for the purchase of non-sanctioned humanitarian goods. And yesterday, the United States reneged on that deal. Mm. So we are, as a country, in a difficult position because our principal ally in the Middle East, under whatever government, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, appears not to care about keeping its word. Can we just come full circle as well then, Sir Richard? We've been discussing the UK government's response. Um, you described it as a knee-jerk endorsement uh, of Israel and that Israel's response is not proportionate. May I ask what would be a proportionate response from Israel? Clearly they have to fight Hamas. Uh, they also have to use other tools, as I've already mentioned to you, namely mobilizing the power of Hamas's international connections, the support of countries in the region like Egypt for a negotiated release of the uh, prisoners. I hope that it will actually come to that and that the threats which Israel is now posing to the Gaza civilian population will lead to an intensification of those efforts which have begun, not only to ease the humanitarian situation by creating a corridor for supplies and ending the uh, total blockade of Gaza, which, again, I cannot see is consistent with any laws of war. So, yes, there is a lot to be done, mm -hmm. but at the moment... Uh, there is no interest in it, apparently, in Whitehall. Sir Richard Dalton, we appreciate your insight and your considerations this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir Richard Dalton is a former ambassador to Iran and former consul general in Jerusalem, uh, referring there then, using really quite strong language to discuss his own thoughts on the UK government, what he called a knee-jerk endorsement of Israel and its response. He described that as obscene.